Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube episode. Today I'm really excited to share two things with you. One, a much needed update on the tropical tent. You can see behind me what it's looking like. I'll show you around a little bit, but the primary reason for today's video is to show off the new Trader Grow. And this is a product from Autopot that I never thought I'd be so excited about. But if you can see here, I'll show you the configuration options and I'll show you the custom way that we're gonna do it. And you can get this at buildasoil.com. Autopot is an automatic watering system. And below here, I've got a tray. I'll show you the whole thing. But essentially this tray floods from a reservoir and it runs like an auto pot. And in the bottom, you have a wicking mat and a root blocker. So you can either set all of your seedlings on there and it'll water them automatically without keeping them in stagnant water. It wicks up to them. You can also start seeds. You can also just cut a hole in the, the bag of soil, set the bag of soil on there and use the spikes that they have that will move the moisture from the wicking mat into your bag of soil. You can also use microgreens. So if you've ever wanted to grow microgreens, this is an automatic way to bottom water them. And the last one is the planter. And so that's what we're gonna discuss. But today what I'm gonna do in the tropical tent is set up this style. And I wanna do it on camera because I've never used one before. We're gonna see how easy it is to set this up or how hard it is. Really, we're just gonna document it. I'm gonna set it up this style, but the next series for our cannabis 10 by 10, we're gonna do the planter style. And before I take the planter out of here, I wanna show you, I'm gonna build this brand new one. So let me set this down. This, these are the reservoirs, different sizes. So they come really easy to ship. It's a 6.6 .6 gallon. And here we have a 13 gallon. And I'll show you what those look like because we're gonna use one of these reservoirs, probably the small one for the seedlings. And I'll use the big one for the next grow. But I've also got another reservoir we could use. I just wanted to show you what they look like. That's what will feed these. So you could have more than one tray to grow and you could have one reservoir that'll bottom water all of your tray to grows. You could have one reservoir that does auto pot XXL and tray to grow. It's a really easy plug and play system. Let's come down here and show you what we've done. We reached out to grassroots and we had them custom build a bed that fits in the tray to grow. Now this isn't set up yet. I'll show you what this is gonna look like when I build the other one. This would normally be moist and it would be fed inside the tray to wick. I've just got it tossed in here right now. I just wanted to show you the custom bed. You can build a trellis into it. It's the living soil bed with the plastic liner. And we left a, a little bit more gap here to help with drying out during the wicking. So I think this is gonna be the ideal setup. We've got it available at buildasoil.com. You can buy just the tray to grow. You can buy this add-on and the add-on comes with the four-way corners so you can build a trellis and the three-way corners so you can cap it all with free shipping as part of the bed so if you already have if you already own the tray to grow and you just want this rad bed that fits perfectly in there that grassy roots made for us you can just order that and it'll come with four corners and four four ways so you can build your first set of trellis and that's available at buildasoil.com let's take this whole thing out of here i've got some ac infinity quarter gallon nursery bags and in the next episode after this, I'm gonna fill these up with build a soil soil. I've got the heady start seedling soil here. And we're gonna pop a whole bunch of tropical fruit trees and grapes, some mandarin, all sorts of stuff in here. And we're gonna pop extra. And we're gonna use the whole tray to make it so that it's easy for me to do. And I'm really looking forward to it. So we'll discuss that in the next episode. I'm gonna set that to the side. It also comes with the seedling trays, which I'll talk about. Let me just get this out of here and we'll grab a brand new box. Now I've got some choices. I've got a rack over here. I could actually set this on the rack. Then I would just have to get my reservoir a little higher. I think I'm gonna set it back here in the corner. This is the tray. This is the fabric bed that would come with it if you purchased the extra bed. The grass roots is a little thicker and just, it's different, right? We really like the grass roots, so that's why we built it. But this is back here. We're bringing the brands together, doing that teamwork between brands. I think it's really fun because we're, we're just after what's best for the grower. And a lot of times it takes multiple different resources to make that best come together. So I'm gonna build that. I've got a couple other random things that I've been using in here. This product we've not talked about yet. I'll be mentioning it in the future, but it's a bio insecticide. I believe it's made from the same manufacturer as those Moroni, which are some really phenomenal biological products we have. But this is a smaller one. And this one is a heat killed Burkholderia SPP strain A396 and spent fermentation media. Essentially, this is a bio insecticide that's made from enzymes similar to some of the other enzyme products. And I've actually been using this pretty low dosage to get rid of the mealy bug that was on the coffee plants and it's working really well. I'm gonna let this trial go a little bit longer and then I'll update you on what it took to kill them and get rid of them completely. Make sure that I've 
got it right before I tell you that it's working. But so far, I'm really, really excited about this. Also in here, in the tropical tent, in the next episode, we're gonna be installing the Blue Mac carrots that use a separate reservoir. Another automatic watering feature, and I think where I'd like to put them is in some of the tropical plants. And if it works well, which this works great, I use these at my house, I'm gonna bring some more over here and we're gonna to start to set up all of the plants so that they're automatically watered and I don't have to deal with it. I'm really into the automatic watering lately as I'm busy and it makes my life easy and it allows me to enjoy the plants even more. So we'll discuss that in a coming episode. You can tell even from here, the lychee plant is just crushing it. In fact, before I start the build, let me just steal the camera. So this is the rubber tree you transplanted in like one of the first episodes of the tropical. Now I know we've not updated it much, but you can tell this is massive now, significantly larger and healthier than it was. And it's in a little tiny three gallon and I just watered every day. That's the first one I'm gonna put the blue mat carrot in. It'll make my life way easier for this big tree that's growing in here. The croton is doing really well. You can see more flowers that were growing and more new green growth. Uh, the lychee tree last time we ended up killing it or removed it before it died. It had some pests that came with it and I just didn't want to deal. And it kept on trying to grow and then not growing. So I ordered one from Etsy instead of one of those big tree shops and it came really healthy. And now it's firing new growth. And I really think we've got it figured out this time. And so I'm just babying it in this container. I left it in its an original container for probably two weeks before I transplanted. As you know, I'm so used to annuals, but trees are slower. This is a key lime, a dwarf one. And this is a dwarf uh, Meyer lemon, and I finally got new growth on it. So I'm just gonna baby that one and hopefully it keeps going. We've got some Carolina Reaper peppers, gonna make some hot sauce. We've also got, this is a, a dragon fruit cactus tree, basically, cactus. So I'm really excited, I've never grown anything like that. And I can't wait to see it get bigger. I don't care how long it takes. The vines, they're just vining up, looking beautiful. We've got some rad variegation on some of these. Love seeing that. This plant is finally doing well from the beginning. It's got its first really healthy new leaves and it's about to open its first vine leaf as it's climbing up and I think it really likes that. This is the mango tree, which is just starting to get some nodules of growth. And we got this one on Etsy also. So really hoping we can get a mango or two out of here. And then we've got some house plants. The money tree I kind of tucked to the side. I think it was getting a little bit too much light and for the video, I moved it over. I'll move it back out soon. The cactus that we grew from seed. Lots to talk about in here. I promise we'll do some more updates, but I at least wanted to give you the tour, show you what things are looking like. We just started to move this one up to the ceiling. We'll see what it does. Then the neon pothos. This one's getting a little too much light here, so I'm gonna move it. Kinda got burned, didn't like it, but I've been fighting to find a place for that one. All right, I've got the box. Let me show you what it looks like. This should be really quick to set up. So here's what it comes with. Now it came in a bigger box, more discreet than this, a brown box. And when I opened it, this is what I found. And so this is the tray that I was talking about. So let me just start to get this stuff out of here. Okay, now this is the actual setup for the plumbing. This is the lid. This is some marketing and also the instructions. So I'm gonna set the stuff that I don't need to the side. Got the tubing here, everything comes all in one. And then it also comes with the seedling trays you can fill with soil and you can put all these down the wicking mat and have four of them. It also comes with a plug, which we're gonna use because we're indoors. They say if you're outdoor, you don't need the plug because if it rains, you want the water to dump out, right? Get these trays, which I'm not gonna use. Got the instructions we'll go over. I've got the mats. Looks like they hooked me up with the microgreen trays. I'm pretty excited about that. I was asking about them. Really wanna grow some microgreens in here. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the first setup starting my seeds that I want to start. Once those are healthy and ready to transplant and give away, hopefully we get really good germination. We'll see about the seeds on Etsy. Then I'm going to set up some microgreens, which I've not done in here before. So this will be really, really fun. Thank you, Autopot, for sending these. That's awesome. Autopot's been so fun to work with. I really like the vibes. All right, so here is the mat. I've got the hose here so that I can moisten it. I know that's part of the initial setup. So literally, I'm just going to go by the directions that are in here. And they do a great job visually breaking it down. Autopot's a great company. And so when I, when I look at it, I'm doing setup guide B, trays, pots, and planters, because I want to do it for pots. And so what I need to do is just follow the directions. And instead of showing it at the camera, which shows you how to do all of this, I'm going to read it and I'll just do it so you can see it in action. It says, position the tray to grow on a level surface. Be sure to use a spirit level to be sure. Avoid placing on gravel or anything that can shift. This, this, because it's a flooding system, it requires it to be level, right? If you're not level, this may not be the best system for you. Insert and check the spirit levels to ensure tray to grow is sitting flat. 
thread the three eighths inch pipe into the tray through the open grommet of the tray wall and then pull it back in and seat it. So let me just get that going right now. So these are the spikes and the strips that you would actually put the spike into with the wicking strip into a bag of soil if you just wanna set a whole bag of soil to grow in. But I'm gonna do something different. So here's the levels that they talked about. So it says, ensure tray is level. And it's pretty cool. It has bamboo cane support. We're gonna use the um, grass roots, a little bit sturdier, right? The PVC, but you can put bamboo poles in here. I mean, they thought of everything and I love it. So here's the filter for the reservoir. Here's the off valve. And it says, put these levels in here. So we will do that. We'll see where we're at. Ensure that it's level. That's really cool. And then there's one down on the very end. Okay, and it says remove grommet below if used outdoors. And there's no grommet in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a cap to block it because we're indoors. And it says that in the instructions, I'm just jumping ahead. So this is the connector for the reservoir, which will it'll go right onto the reservoir when I'm ready. And let's see, they said, go ahead and insert the tubing. I've got the hose here. Might as well just get a tiny bit of moisture on there. And I'm just feeding it through with the rubber grommet, a little bit of moisture. Let me show you how easy it is. All you do is you grab this. There's a half moon section, right? And that's going to align with, with the cap here that will fit into that half moon. And that's where it actually seats. But before I do that, these are the instructions they were talking about. Remove this. Go ahead and, and insert. Oh, sorry. This goes over the back. Then you're gonna put this on. Okay, that's it. There's no pressure, so that would actually stay on, but then they have a lock that even holds it tighter. Sure to have no issues. I really like these two-way flood valves. It's part of their whole system. Okay, so I'm pulling the slack out. That's what they mentioned to do until it seats just where this half moon section clips onto the plastic. When you have it, you'll see there's a little vertical piece of plastic that goes into that half moon that locks this in place. And so I'm just gonna make sure that's locked down. Everything looks good. I can see the rubber on here covers the hole. Everything looks really good. Got the tube in there and this can go to my reservoir setup. So essentially that part is done. Let's see what the next step says. So it says install it. If growing outdoors, remove the six millimeter quarter inch overflow plug from the in front of the tray to grow. If growing indoors, keep the plug in place. I actually had to add the plug right there. So I've got it so that it won't be dumping water out. I'll put the plug back in, but this is the hole they're talking about. If you're outdoor and it rains, you want it to drain out there. So that's why that's there. And then place the lid over the aqua valve compartment of the tray and press securely into position. So that's done now. This lid goes right here and it kind of goes right over the top and covers it, okay? Now let's go to the next one. We're now on this step and it says wet and lay the capillary matting into the tray to grow. Tuck into the two outer channels only. I'm just not sure if the gray side should be up or if the black side should be up. And here's my thought. The gray side feels the most absorbent. So I believe that should be in the water, wicking to this black side that's slightly more protected. I don't know, it doesn't say, and I'm curious. So it is what it is. I'm gonna set it up with the black side up. I'm gonna reach out to Autopot afterwards and find out, and then I will report back to you on the next video. But this is why I do the videos, so that our customer service staff and all of us are aware of exactly how things work so we can answer questions. Now it's said to go ahead and wet this. So I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm just going to wet it a little bit and I'm trying not to fill the whole tray with water so I can do that later, but at least I want this moist, like it said. So that's nice and moist. And what they mentioned doing is inserting this into the first, the two grooves. See these grooves? There's four of them. They want us to insert this wicking mat into the end one and the end one, not the middle two. And that's on the directions. So I'm actually going to take this where I think it's about even. And then I'm going to tuck this without pulling it from this side, but pulling it from this side. Eventually it's gonna sit flat there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now that should lay flat. And to aid it in laying flat, I'm just gonna wet it just a little bit more. Okay, now this side I need to do the same thing. And then now you can see that I've got this wicking mat just take it a little time now because this is gonna be kind of permanently in there afterwards. I wanna make sure that it's gonna wick evenly. That looks really good. You can see that it's pushed down into the grooves. That's exactly how they want it. I wanna weigh it down just a little bit by getting it wet. 
And then they said the next step is this root blocker. This is made from copper. And what you don't want is the roots growing into this, eating it, and then eventually getting into the reservoir and clogging the reservoir. So this prevents any problems from using it for a long time. So now that fits perfectly in there. That's really nice. Let's see if we moisten that. Wet and lay the root control sheet on top of the capillary matting. The root control sheet can be laid copper side up or down. So the capillary mat, they don't discuss being up or down, but for sure this copper one can go up or down. It doesn't matter. I like the copper up, looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna moisten that as well. Okay, that's what we needed. That's it. Now a tapped reservoir connection, push it into this and connect it to the reservoir. And so that's gonna be really easy. In the next video, what you're gonna see me do, now that we've discussed the options, the grassroots bed that we carry for this, I've got the reservoirs. I'm gonna decide which reservoir I'd like to use. And in the next video, I'm gonna pop the reservoir up, we're gonna plug this in, and we're gonna turn it on. And the reason I'm not doing it today is I don't have the time and I don't have the seeds here. That's the main reason. But I wanna pop probably 40 seeds in here. Well, however many will fit, maybe 20, I'm not sure. But I've got these quarter gallon AC Infinity nursery bags. This is what they look like. And my thoughts are, they, they mention on here, you wanna have open holes to touch this, but this is so thin, I feel like it'll wick moisture really well. And so it's my theory, I don't know, we'll see. And we're gonna just document the results together. But I'm gonna get as many of these will fit in here. And we're gonna have our dwarf black grape bonsai, we're gonna have our dwarf mandan tree seeds. We've got a whole bunch of fun seeds that we're gonna pop in here. And then instead of me having to manually water and potentially overwater some of the seeds, we're gonna let this do all the work from us and we're gonna document it. Then we're gonna use another one of these in season six, at least in one area, maybe more. I'm really excited to try it and learn from it. So we will be doing that and documenting it. Look for that coming in the next episode. Otherwise, that's everything that I wanted to go over with you today. If you're into this kind of stuff, if you have questions, let us know. The Trade to Grow is available at buildasoil.com. When you go there, type in trade to grow, all one word. We either carry the grassroots pot, which you can buy separate if you already own this, or you can get an entire bundle. And the bundle, if you look, has an option. You'll have to choose, do I want no reservoir? You could just use a trash can, or maybe you already have a reservoir, or you can choose your reservoir size. And there's one hard blast plastic reservoir, like a trash can. The rest are all these flexi tanks, which we'll show you in the next video. One last thing is if you do decide that you wanna add soil, because you're getting the whole fabric planter bed, the grass roots, those will hold four bags of soil. And so if you happen to grab the tray to grow and you go get four bags of 3.0 soil, it's gonna take 10% off your soil for buying them at the same time. Um, if you've got questions, drop them in here. Um, I'm learning about this as we go, so I promise we'll do more updating. So far, it looks level. It looks like we're gonna have a good run with it. And I promise to update you more in the next video. As always, subscribe, like, tell your friends about this stuff, and I will see you on the next Build a Soil YouTube video.